Hello, welcome back. In a video I did a little while ago about the top Zen ships for PvP, uh, I talked a little bit about the Hydra and how that's kind of the most popular ship to fly around right now, um, mostly because of its ability to put out a lot of spike damage and uh, carry unconventional systems so you can use universal consoles. Uh, and it's a little bit different than flying your traditional dogfighter. So I'm going to do a video where I build a Hydra um, and it's a little bit unscripted. So maybe I'll cut some stuff out uh, if I ramble for too long. Um, but I'm just going to sort of uh, keep it dynamic here. I'm just going to build it as if I'm just getting a new ship. That way you can kind of see into my thought process. And uh, obviously I have this ship over on my main account. I'm on my free to play account right now. Um, so I am going to be emulating some things that I use on my main account that I already know work. Obviously I'm not starting completely from scratch here. I kind of have a plan for how I want it to work. Um, the first thing I want to talk about a little bit is the difference between the legendary Jem'Hadar. So let me pull that up. Um, so the legendary Jem'Hadar attack ship bundle, uh, which you pretty much need in order to do a Hydra anyway, um, because it comes with this Vanguard specialist trait that extends the duration of surgical strikes. So on the Hydra, we're going to be using surgical strikes, but when you use surgical strikes, it blocks out, um, it shares the cooldown category with not only beam abilities like beam overload, but also cannon abilities. So on the kind of more traditional dogfighter style ship uh, which the attack ship is you usually run beam overload three and that's sort of your main source of damage and you also run cannon something it can be scatter volley or it can be rapid fire it doesn't matter usually scatter volley is used because of traits like preferential targeting or superior area denial which you can use on a beam overload ship and because you have both of those abilities firing every 15 seconds together uh, the colony consoles, like you would use, um, this is a different build, obviously, but these right here, the colony uh, protomatter matrix infusers, basically every time you use a beam ability or cannon ability, it rolls a chance at this healing. So as you're flying, if you have four or five of these equipped, you're just getting constant rolling healing. And that's why even still, even right now, if you are just getting into pvp and you're kind of new to pvp you still want to get this ship and build a beam overload ship and start there first and the reason is because you have this constant healing so there's more room for error if you mistime a console or click the wrong button or something it's not like certain death the hydra um sometimes can be a little less forgiving because of that um, and the trade-off is the Hydra has a little bit more spike damage potential because of surgical strikes. But surgical strikes, you can't use superior area denial. You can't use preferential targeting. Um, there's a couple of other, you know, traits that you can't use with it. So it restricts a little bit of what you can do trait-wise. And since it locks out all your other abilities, if you use colony consoles, and the first Hydra um, video I ever put up, I'm using five colony consoles. But you only get one cycle at that, right? So if I use five colony consoles on a beam overload ship, I get two chances. That's twice as much healing. Um, but because of that, uh, and this is sort of how the Hydra has shifted, instead of using colony consoles, instead you're using universal consoles for healing that are active. Like you have to actually click them and turn them on, which means you have to either anticipate incoming damage uh, or save them for the right moment or something. If, if you're just, again, if you're new and you've just got everything rolling on like a spam bar and you're still kind of getting the hang of being shot at by an enemy player, um, stick to the beam overload thing because that'll give you the most margin for error and you can practice your timing with universal consoles on that ship. And then when you move up to the Hydra, it'll feel like a natural progression. I think if you start out with the Hydra like right off the bat, it might be a little bit of a shock. And again, um, if you had to make a decision like Hydra or something else, then maybe it would be harder. But again, you, you pretty much have to get this ship anyway to do the Hydra. So get this one first. Uh, and this will be a trait that we use. I've already, you know, grinded up the 
uh, Zen that I needed for this a while back on this character. Uh, and I have 2400 Zen, and I was really hoping that there would be a ship sale this weekend uh, for Labor Day so that I could kind of show me. I have a T6 coupon as well. I mentioned that in the previous video. So basically, I'll be able to buy one ship, and the one ship I'm going to buy will be the Hydra. Um, but I have 2400 Zen, which during a 20% ship sale will be enough to buy another ship. And I think I've kind of settled on getting the Seneca for the console. So when we get to the stage where I'm actually building the ship, uh, I'm just going to leave a ship console slot open, and that will be where the Seneca's console goes. Um, I think that should be pretty easy to visualize. And uh, in other news, I got on today and my Alachi beam array sold for 12 million EC. So I now have, um, if I go to my uh, bank here, um, let's see. So I still have the, the 15 million EC cap on this character. Um, so maybe I will buy that at one point, but I'm at 62 million plus a little extra, and I would really like to have uh, this, the Boimler Effect personal trait. So I technically have enough EC to buy this, uh, but I can't actually withdraw 59 million EC from my bank because I still have the 15 million cap. So uh, if, let's see. Yeah, I mean, it, it's 500 Zen. I'm not really willing to pay that. Uh, personally, I think that this should just be unlocked for everyone anyway, and it's kind of stupid that it isn't. Uh, console players, you don't have to worry about this. It's unlocked for you automatically. I guess they just don't like PC players on this one specific thing. Um, not that they love console players either, as we've seen, but uh, yeah. Um, so maybe I'll unlock this at some point in the future. Sometimes it is 20% off, so it's 400 Zen, so... I'll consider it then, but for the time being, uh, what I eventually will do is I'll go to one of the chat channels or I'll find someone in my fleet or my group that has a copy of the Boimler effect or is willing to buy it off the exchange for me, and then I will trade them 15 million EC four times for the Boimler effect. And I know that's like a really stupid roundabout way of doing it, but I'm really cheap, especially in this character where I have such limited resources. And there's so many helpful communities. And, and just so if you're, you're aware, if you are on PC right now and you need to buy something like this that's over your EC cap, uh, just reach out to me and I will be happy to do it for you. Um, and I'll just trade you 15 million at a time so that you can get whatever expensive thing you need. Um, another alternative option is to take out EC from the bank and buy uh, master keys. So if you buy... Uh, one master key at a time. If you bought um, like five or six of these, then you could mail them or trade, you know, six master keys for Boimler or five master keys and five million EC for Boimler or something like that um, in the trading channel and most like fleet trading channels and that kind of thing. People are pretty good about allowing you to do that kind of stuff. So um, that will be something that comes into a play uh, a little bit later. So I also want to mention, if I were going to continue with the Legendary Gem Hadar build, I would be choosing uh, Lobi instead for my event campaign choice, and potentially choosing uh, as my purchases, since you can get two ships within 1500 Lobi, um, the NX Refit, which is a pretty decent ship in its own right. It's got a pilot seat and, um, you know, it's, it's not bad. And the reason for getting this is preferential targeting. That's the 100% cat one damage for uh, beam overload after using scatter volley. Uh, and then the other ship I would get is the Zindi Adaleth Dreadnought. And the reason for that, again, is the trait super weapon ingenuity uh, extends the duration of beam overload by five seconds, basically allowing it to be up with 100% 100 uh, of the time. Um, if I were pursuing the science build further, the coupon I would have spent on the Somerville for the uh, Spore Infused Anomalies trait, and then I probably would have chosen Lobi again and gotten the Nakul Damosh, which is an excellent science ship for PvP, um, and then I would move my whole build over to this ship. Uh, it's got a cloak, 
It's got a really good defensive uh, console time slip, and the bridge officer layout is just perfect. You've got Intel, you've got Pilot, and all of the seating basically is universal because you don't have anything that's wasted because even the tactical seat is shared with Intel, so there's, there's nothing wasted on this ship, and uh, the trait sucks. That's the only negative. Uh, and then my other choice would be the Maquis Raider, um, which is certainly a fine, fun ship, but uh, nothing super spectacular on its own. But the main reason for choosing that is the console Plasma Storm module. Uh, the Plasma Storm has a very strong slow and pull effect. It's great for science control builds, and it deals a lot of damage. It's just a really good choice. Um, and this trait, Badlands Tactics, I wouldn't probably use it on like a high-end build, but on a build where you're still struggling to find traits and stuff, it's actually not that bad. If you're within three kilometers of anomaly, so if you just have constant aftershock gravity wells and stuff, as long as you're within three kilometers of your anomalies, the amount of st stealth that this gives, it says a moderate boost. It's 2,800 stealth, 2,800, not 280. Um, so 2,800 stealth in combination with Intel team is essentially untargetable uh, in the in the grand scheme of things. It, it's not possible to have enough perception to target somebody that's using this trait that's near an anomaly. It's simple as that. So um, it's, it's not the best trait for a lot of high-end builds, but it is pretty good otherwise. So that's what I would choose if I were running a beam overload or a science build respectively. Okay, so I guess we should go ahead and buy the ship. Um, and I don't usually use the ship uh, vendor. The reason I'm over here is I just want to see... Okay, good. I do have a couple of active ship slots available. So, um, And I did work on the weapons and re-engineering them to some degree. A couple of them still need to be... Still need to finish upgrading these. I'm going to use arrays on this build. Um, yeah, so all of these need to be re-engineered. And I have 117,000 dill, so I, I have materials for a couple of upgrades and a couple of re-engineering attempts. So I'll, I'll, I'll get to that a little bit later. But uh, essentially, these are all going to be uh, crit damage damage for the epic modifier. And then I, I try to roll as many critical damage modifiers as I can. Uh, if I get damage instead, I might leave it temporarily. But like long term, I'm going for a crit the maximum amount of crit damage, and that's because we're, we're dealing with spike damage. I talked about this um, in other videos and other things. I, I've been meaning to do kind of like a advanced tactics or advanced piloting or something video, but I don't want to come off as like elitist. Um, but essentially, like dealing a large amount of damage over an extended period of time, which is how PvE is, like if you're playing infected, right? your runtime is 60 seconds or 90 seconds, or I mean, probably your average player is, you know, four or five minutes uh, for elite infected. Uh, and you're going for just continuously high damage over that extended period of time. In PVP, especially with Hydras, because people are activating consoles and things and anticipation of incoming damage, you want to try to, to shorten that window. If you can deal the most amount of damage in a five second window, even if you deal less damage over the rest of the fight, that five second window might be enough to catch someone off guard and you know get them really quickly. And it's one of the reasons why it's such a complicated subject. I'm sure lots of you have seen posts on like Reddit and Twitter and elsewhere where people complain about PVPers doing one shot builds and the reason why we use the one-shot builds isn't because we necessarily want to, but when you're playing against other high-end PVPers, you have to deal that damage in a short spike. If you deal like less damage but extend it over a longer period of time, the people who are complaining about one-shot builds are still going to die, but you won't kill high-end PVPers, and that's the point of kind of getting into PVP, right, is to keep improving and getting better. So there's nothing you can really do about those people. They don't, they don't really want to be helped. You know, they just want to complain. Um, okay, so I also completed the event campaign. So I'm going to redeem that as well this time. So let's just kick it off. I'm going to go ahead and grab the Hydra. The... Okay. 
so first things first, I guess. I really hate the way that it looks by default. I'm not really into the angry dustbuster um, front appearance of this, so I, I like the more classic ship a little bit more, but um, I, I always fall into doing kind of the same routine here, so I, I admit I'm just going to do my, my usual thing, which... Um, Uh, and then the other thing is, you, if you don't know this already, you can set the patterns to Vesta, uh, which came out with the legendary Vesta, of course. But even if you don't own the legendary Vesta, you still get access to this whole material. And if you set everything to Vesta, um, you can change the color of the whole ship, basically, like as a solid color. Um, which is pretty cool, I think, so... So the first thing I do whenever I build a ship is I, before I even equip any gear or any of that other stuff, I make sure that I have the bridge officer layout configured the way that I want it. Um, so let's do, just in case I need to buy anything. Yeah, so I have reverse shield polarity here as a good option uh, for defense. I could also use eject warp plasma, which is a nice, like, unconventional systems proc. But what I'd like to have is emergency power to aux 3. And then I can still switch out emergency to aux 3 for eject warp plasma or or shield polarity, or even emergency to shields uh, if I don't need the perception. The reason I'm going to run emergency power to aux 3 is just in case I encounter someone that's using Exodus, um, especially with the upcoming uh, T6XX upgrade um, system. Uh, I think we might see Exodus a little more often, just almost out of necessity because people have it and uh, won't have other traits to slot. Um, in the meantime, I should upgrade this ship. Thanks to Red Alerts, I have many uh, account-bound experimental upgrade tokens, so we'll go ahead and do that. Perfect. Okay, let's go to space. So, first things first, power levels. We got max weapons, and then second to max is engine save. Um, go ahead and get my trace kind of set up here. Uh, okay, so let's go ahead and go through the gear. I want the Disco Dual Beam Bank, the Terran Array, the Nausicaan Array, and then this will bind this Targeting Link Disruptor, and I want the Piezo Polaron. There we go. For the Deflector, I'm going to use the Gemhadar, but the Colony Deflector is also a good choice here uh, for that extra 15% crit severity. Uh, fortified engines and then I think I'll do the innervated core for the resistance to control and the fortified shield and I do intend at some point to grab the Tilly's shield and core because that passive regen is really good uh, on ships like this as well uh, let's see aft weapons we've got our crafted Omni and a Martok Omni Experimental weapon. Uh, the Soliton Impeller is good. I do kind of like this one as well. I don't think Ravager Shriek was particularly good because the recharge time was just so slow. I think I'll just go with Soliton for right now because I know it's good and I'll play with other ones later. Um, and then Reactive Armor Catalyst, uh, Deuterium Surplus, and... Uh, I'll do shield battery just because I run my shield power so low it can't hurt to have and then I don't have temporal negotiator but that's usually what goes in my other slot so uh, I'll have to go grab that temporal negotiator uh, is a clicky you can use only every five minutes it comes from the Delta recruit 
uh, but it cools down all of your abilities uh, basically to global. And I actually use it if I get sub nuked. Uh, it's one of my kind of like emergency buttons just to get everything, my cycles back going. Uh, okay, so let's do consoles. I uh, went ahead and I grabbed these vulnerability exploiter consoles, but they are phasers. Uh, and I'm using Disruptor on this build, and the reason for that uh, is gonna come soon. Um, so I'll have to go buy those, and I did uh, a little bit of grinding for fleet credits, so I have some fleet credits. Uh, let's do, okay, well, first of all, Dragon's Blood Flame Reactor is gonna be a good one on this, bonus Disruptor damage. Uh, and then let's do uh, Hostile Acquisition. Obfuscation screen. I'll put my defensive ones up here and my offensive ones down here, I think. So what else? Um, that's not a bad one. The passes are kind of nice as well. I don't like that the duration gets reduced when firing, but it's just 95 shield resistance anyway, so I'm not sure quite how effective that really is in practice. Um... Uh, induction coils I definitely want. I put that down here. And then I also want Lorca's. Yeah. That way I have the two-piece set with the dual beam bank. Um, these three, I'm going to put exploiters in all three of these slots. Uh, and then one of these slots will be the um, Seneca console. Uh, the Martok console is not bad either. Some extra HP... Power levels turn. Pax Trivernium, that's always a good one. If I do the Martok set, I also get the two piece, which is a little extra accuracy and crit. Definitely need a fluidic, so that's one. Okay, um, and then let me go ahead and redeem the event campaign choice. I'm gonna do the premium starship choice. And I'm going to select, uh, do, do, do. Gotta make 100% sure I get the right one here, because this is a one time, uh, this is a one time pick. TOS Dreadnought. Prototype Atlas Dreadnought Cruiser. Comes equipped with a dynamic power redistributor universal console. Okay. That's my choice. And I want the Atlas specifically. Definitely not any of the other ones that have a different console. Yep, okay. All right, so that gives me the DPRM. There it is. Hey, okay. Uh, let's see. So I got one, two more slots to kind of play with here. Let's do. I mean, the, the defense of crystalline absorption matrix is pretty decent. Um, hull image refractors for some temporary hull, I guess. Tachyon net's a good one. Crit chance and crit severity. Parasitic ice for people who are slow. Yeah, I think I'm gonna do I'm gonna do Tachyon Net, and then I'm also gonna do this Dominion Defense Screen. But I just as easily would pick something else. Um, honestly, another good one for this slot might just be your like standard Fleet Research Lab console, but in Control times two. Um, because it would extend the duration of um, evade target lock, that kind of thing. And I mean, extra control is always good to have, really. Um, or another, like, emergency clicky, like shared processing or something, strictly defensive. I'm going to carry around, actually, crystalline absorption uh, in my inventory down here, uh, just in case I need it. But I'll do this one for now. 
Um, do, do. Okay. Uh, so this stuff can go back into my bank. Okay, let's run to the fleet spire really quick and we can grab those exploiters. Could just do the generic beam ones to kind of future proof things, but since I already have a set of phaser variants, I'm just going to go with the proper disruptor ones to give me a little extra. I mean, it's a pretty small difference, but a tiny little bit extra cat one damage. So one, two, three. Let's go ahead and put protected status on all those. Equip them on the ship. And I'll have to upgrade those, but I can do that a little later. Uh, okay, so I'm going to run Constable as my secondary and Pilot as my primary for right now. Um, that seems to be what works best for me in this, but I also still really like Command Primary uh, just because you get this boost morale is still really good uh, and the Achilles heal debuff and, and all this stuff is still, still pretty good. Uh, Constable's gotten really effective lately now that um, Placates are less of a factor. You can actually keep someone targeted enough to get this debuff on them. Uh, and it gives you a lot of things, like it lowers their stealth uh, so you can target them better. Um, this one in particular is incredibly powerful. 5% uh, chance in space to remove the longest duration buffs. So that could be like the Seneca console or SIF linkage, emergency power abilities. Anything that has like a 30 second, 20 to 30 second duration uh, has a pretty good chance of getting stripped by this. Uh, and that's that's just really effective. But um, Strategist is also pretty good. If I drop Threatening Stance, then I gain this 20% uh, crit severity that you could kind of flip on and off. That would be good. Um, or you could even just do the standard like Command Miracle Worker thing. It's really hard to, to pick wrong there. Um, but Pilot Constable is what I'm running right now. Alright, let's go down the list. So... We're doing surgical strikes, uh, beam training, that's not bad, blue skies, yeah I mean extra extra defense and uh, flight speed, that's not terrible. This was really cheap for a while, hull cap, fleet coordinator would be good as long as you're in a five man team and not for like solo stuff. So fresh from r, &R is a definite must and I'd say the same for give your all. Uh, intelligence agent attache. Pseudo submission. So this placate is cleared now by pilot team. So anybody that's just rotating pilot team constantly is completely immune to this anyway. However, there are still people flying science ships and stuff like um, Damosh and Anorax and that kind of stuff where this placate will still affect those ships. So there might be some merit to still running this. Or the other thing is like pilot team, uh, it lasts 10 seconds and has a 10 second cooldown, but if there's any like gap at all and they have you targeted, then this will, you know, will get them as well. Um, but since you don't have the constant healing that triggers this from the colony consoles, uh, this would only trigger when I use Aux to Sif or Eng team. Because those are the only heals. Uh, I mean, I guess science team as well. But because there's no like heal over time effects on this build, um, it won't get triggered quite as often. So it's a little less effective than it once was. It's still worth considering. Uh, reconstructive radiation is definite. Um, nice to just have that passive heal, even if it's a small amount. Um, but it also clears damage over time effects. So I love this one. I've always used it. Uh, regenerative control synergy. This is from an episode, uh, Senkethi one. And I like this one, uh, especially on a build like this where I have, uh, at the moment I have clean getaway, repulsors, and viral impulse burst. So there's three abilities that activate this 45% regen. Uh, it does not stack, just to be clear. Um, it maxes at 45%. But it does refresh, so you can keep it going pretty continuously. I've been testing it a little bit recently, and it seems uh, worth a slot. 
Another good one is redirected armor plating. That one you can grab from an episode as well. And I'd actually argue that like in a lot of cases, redirected armor plating is better than something like Context is for Kings, for example. Context is for Kings, you have the added benefit of getting some bonus damage, but it takes time to stack up. So say you're flying and someone sub nukes you and all your buffs are gone, Context is for Kings will take a while. Redirected armor plating, the very next hit you take, you instantly get it back, 30 damage resistance. So um, it's nice to kind of protect against stuff like that. And redundant animator uh, containment also, I think this was like 2 million EC, uh, 25 resistance at 125 engine power. Um, and I think that tooltip must be bugged because I'm only at 102 engine power. And I know from before that if I drop my engine power, it lowers. Yeah, so it must be plus 25 at 100 engine power and the tooltip is wrong. Uh, yeah, that's what it looks like. Uh, secret command codes, really, really good. Um, just like continuous heal over time thing, a little extra resistance. Um, Self-modulating fire is really nice. You can pierce through someone's uh, shields. Like if they're running reverse shield polarity or something like that, you can get a little extra shield pen. Um, smuggler's luck for some extra defense and control cleanses. Uh, unconventional systems is a critical one. So I think long-term looking at this, I will replace something. I'll end up replacing either redirected armor plating, redundant animator containment, or regenerative control synergy. One of those three is going to get replaced by the Boimler effect once I get that. Uh, and then another good one to get, but I don't have yet, is Terran targeting systems. That adds 15% crit severity. Um, at the cost of slowing you down slightly, but it's the slow is so minimal, it's not really worth mentioning. Um, so I will grab those two traits at some point in the future and put them on this. But for now, I'm going to lean a little bit more defensively and go with this arrangement. Uh, okay, Starship Traits. Definitely Temporal Surge. I will use Cold Hearted. Uh, and then the reason I went with Disruptor, uh, as I mentioned before, is for five magics. So five magics, um, basically you get this pretty large bonus damage, uh, and it applies to Disruptor as well as like electrical damage and other stuff like that. Um, and radiation damage, if you remember my experimental weapon, is a radiation damage weapon. So that will get buffed by five magics as well. Um, and then I definitely need Invincible and... Rhythmic Rumble. So for the last trait slot... Uh, oh, Vanguard Specialist. That's our other one. I, I knew there was one I was missing. So the first three trait slots that I selected here, Temporal Surge, Cold Hearted, and Five Magics, those are all pretty offensive. You can definitely use Temporal Surge defensively, but this is mostly for dealing more damage. Um, something to consider uh, is if you feel like you're dying a lot, you could drop one, I, I wouldn't drop multiple of these, but you could drop like five magics or cold hearted, like if you don't have cold hearted. Um, concealed repairs is a nice sort of heal effect every 45 seconds. Uh, another good one on a ship like this where we have a lot of, um, if we count, we've got seven specialist abilities. So a trait like um, Ingenious Tenacity, which I used like on the Scryer and the Bozeman builds on this channel like a year ago. If you did this event ship, um, you can use this, which will restore shields. Uh, and you can keep this up pretty continuously without having to micromanage it too much. So that's a good option. Uh, another good one is uh, do, do, do Superior Going the Extra Mile. Uh, just for boosting your hull capacity. That's not my favorite one, but it's decent. Uh, and then another really good one is Superior Pedal to Metal, 30% bonus damage over time. So, like, if I didn't have Cold Hearted, that's what I would pick. And coming up pretty soon uh, with this T6XX upgrade thing, there will be a seventh Starship trait slot. So, uh, just as an example, uh, if I stick with my original layout with the Cold Hearted trait, um, if I have a seventh trait to work with, I can definitely add something defensive, concealed repairs, ingenious tenacity, etc. 
Um, but I also could add something on the offensive side, so like carrier wave shield hacking, shields offline for five seconds on and any time use an intel ability. This works with like evade target lock, for example, um, as well as we have viral uh, impulse burst. It does not work with intel team or surgical strikes, but um, that is still a pretty decently effective trait. Uh, I also could use uh, even improved critical systems, extra crit severity, 15% uh, when using emergency power abilities, especially when we're cycling two like this. So that's a good one. Um, most likely I will end up doing superior pedal of the metal as my seventh trait on this particular build, but we'll see kind of how the, how the, you know, trends evolve over time uh, as the seventh trait is added. There'll be more people dealing more damage, so I think there'll be kind of a reaction to that where some people will use that extra trait slot for more defensive moves, and sort of the balance will settle somewhere in the middle, and I'm, I'm not quite sure where that is yet, because obviously it hasn't come out yet. Um, let's talk about reputation traits. So uh, a slam dunk for me always, these two traits I pretty much run on everything. So extra bonus damage resistance rating lets me exceed the cap of 75%. And 20% crit severity all the time. Can't really argue with those. I like those. Um, automated Proto Matter Conduits is pretty good for the regen. Uh, I also have used active hull hardening in the past. It just increases resistances as your hull goes down. This can't be like sub nuked off of you or anything, so you have it all the time. Um, but I'm going to go with uh, Critical Deflection, especially against other Surgical Strikes builds. This knocks off a lot of critical damage. I used the uh, STO builds energy weapon calculator a few times. And if you calculate, you know, like the beam damage and then subtract 75% of your critical chance and then recalculate it, it's a pretty big hit to your damage, especially with surgical strikes. So I'm definitely going to run that as a defensive measure. And then another one that I run a lot is this counter stroke one. Anytime you're affected by a control effect, you get this massive crit severity boost, and you're not going to have this up all the time. But remember what I said about PvP is it's not about consistent damage over an extended period of time. We're talking about spike damage. So if this 5 seconds of 40-something percent crit severity happens to coincide with um, the 10 seconds of self-modulating fire and a sub-nuke, like... That's a ton of damage in a really short time window um, that would be hard to react to. So I always run that. I think that's good. Um, I used to run that on my beam overload ships as well. If you skim my buff bar and some old videos. Um, let's see. I, I would run... So a pretty... like I used to always run Precision and Tyler's Duality for the increased crit chance. But because a lot of people now are running Critical Deflection... Uh, what would be um, precision is 5% crit chance and Tyler's duality uh, let's just pretend that that's 5% crit chance too because in combat I'll have more hull than I have right now when I'm just sitting idle um, so 10% and it costs me 2 trait slots if someone's using crit deflection that's only 2.5% crit chance at the cost of two trait slots. So I, I just don't see that as being that particularly viable. Uh, I am really partial to viral engines overload. Um, next outgoing critical hit every 30 seconds, you can knock someone's engines offline, uh, especially in these ships that we use that use rhythmic rumble for their main source of resistances. Uh, a slow at the right moment can be very, sorry, very powerful. Um, and kind of similar to what I was saying about counter strokes, that short, window of time uh, but I think to be on the safe side right now I'm gonna run uh, automated protomatter conduits um, just for this extra hull regen especially because I don't have the Tilly's two-piece set yet uh, and that extra hull regen uh, will be nice to have because I, I know in combat with these because you don't have that like constant healing like you have on um, like the JHAS and those kind of beam overload ships, uh, having some regen thrown into the mix can help recover your hull when it's low. Uh, so that's that's a good one to have. So that's what I'm going to run for right now. That. All, all right. 
So uh, this side over on the right, seven and eight are my uh, kind of automatic trays where I hit spacebar and I'm just activating those on a cycle. Uh, tray four at the bottom here is like consumables for me. Uh, and then trays one and two are usually what I use for like universal consoles because I can easily access those keys. Like um, some people fly with their mouse, like holding both mouse button downs and like moving the, moving the camera around like this as they fly. Um, but I fly with my mouse open like this and I look around me as I fly because sometimes you have to like look to the side at someone and you know like click on them target or whatever. Um, so I'm a WASD pilot which means if I want to activate something like if I'm going to activate DPRM here, 5 is right above my finger there so it's just really easy to reach. So that's usually where I put abilities like that. Uh, and then this top tray, tray five, I have bound to the button G, which is close to my pointer finger. And that's usually where I put like my heals and debuff cleanses because clearing debuffs, again, very important in PVP. So uh, let's just go down. I'll put everything in the right place. I like obfuscation screen on zero because it's next to my numpad zero and sometimes I reach over there with my hand to tap that. Um, the Dominion defense screen, I know it technically would be better if I didn't spam it, but I'm just going to put that on my spam bar for now. Man, I want DPRM and Fluidic to be decently accessible. Breath of the Dragon I pretty much never want to fire because it slows you down a lot, drains engine power. Uh, let's put this down here. Uh, I do have tray nine bound to a different keys. So I think I'll put force challenge and anti-time on that one. Okay, so hopefully I don't forget that they're there. I, I do forget sometimes. Um, and then breath of the dragon, I'm probably not gonna reach six with my fingers, so I think Yeah, I think that's pretty good. If I get another defensive console, I put it uh, here where Tachyon Net Drones is, and I'll move that somewhere else. So uh, within pretty easy reach here. Uh, first, let me change the order of these real quick. So I want Pilot Team and Lambda first, and then Surgical Strikes, Oxus if, yeah. Uh, okay, so my, my first row uh, so for like every tap of spacebar, you, you usually get two abilities in succession. So like my first tap of spacebar will be both those pilot abilities because these pilot abilities, pilot team uh, and attack pattern lambda, if you look, uh, they have a recharge time, but there's no activation time. I don't know why that description is so long, but there's no activation time, which means they're instant activations. And same thing with surgical strikes, but something like uh, aux to structural, if you look, it has a half second activation time. So I'm intentionally putting that further down the line. And once I get into like continuous combat, it, uh, it won't matter as much at that point, but this seems to work for me, um, especially like after getting sub nuked or something like that, I can very quickly get like rebuffed. Uh, and then I've got, uh, on the next row, I've got Intel team and then my three control abilities. Um, and I do put those just on spam bar, but if I, we're a little bit better of a player, I guess. I would put those uh, control abilities on a separate key and then use them only after I have a universal console on cooldown. That's the kind of ideal way to run that. Um, since I'm not running Photonic Officer on this build, I do really need Boimler effect. So I'll have to chase somebody down uh, sooner rather than later for that. Um, but alternatively, I could replace Repulsors with Photonic Officer 1, and that should pretty much solve that problem in tandem with Clean Getaway, which also, uh, after no damage is taken, has a cooldown effect as well. Um, and thanks to like Evade Target Lock and Temporal Surge, there will be times when I'm not taking any damage and I'll benefit from that cooldown. Um, so I think and there's Regenerative Control Synergy, that's good. I think we're pretty set on this. Um, so now the only remaining things are to finish upgrading these exploiters, uh, finish upgrading these weapons, 
these two ultra rares and re-engineering everything. Uh, and then I guess when the seventh trait slot comes around, figuring out what to put there and grabbing Boimler effect, but that's pretty much the build. Uh, oh, I forgot to do duty officers. Let's see that. So uh, I've got the placate duff. I've got the uh, warp core engineer that clears debuffs and the con officer for recharging evasive maneuvers. Those are all pretty critical. Uh, I definitely don't need aftershock gravity wells. I'm not using scramble sensors, although I technically could use scramble sensors instead of repulsors on this build, uh, and that would be pretty annoying. So that's not a terrible idea. Uh, the thing I like about repulsors, and same the same reason why I chose clean getaway and viral engines, is even with no enemies around and I can't target anyone, I can still hit repulsors and get a cooldown on my uh, consoles. If I were to replace that with scramble sensors, I would only be able to use that when I have an enemy in range and targeted, um, which can be a little inconsistent sometimes in PvP. So that's why I'm going with this sort of more safe method. Uh, okay, so that's out. Uh, what's this? Science, reduction in intel abilities. Uh, I only have two science abilities, and one of them I'm only going to activate as needed, which is science team. So I think that's out as well. So let's take a look. Um, definitely 2047. This extra accuracy is always good. Uh, the armor penetration, uh, for those who don't know, this is hull penetration, not armor penetration. So it's very, very weak. Uh, 50 hull penetration is only 5 armor pen or 5 debuff, basically. So it's not that much. Um, but still, it's, it's worth it for the 40 accuracy. Uh, another good one to have, I don't have it personally, but 25 of 47 also adds more accuracy and it stacks with 20. Um, these beam overload guys don't help, uh, for a while, like on my, even on my main account, um, I didn't have a 20 of 47 for a really long time. I was waiting for one to come up for sale that was cheap that I could afford. And I used one of those blue crit severity doffs. I don't know how expensive those are right this moment, but I'll go check in a second. Um, let's see. I could use these healing doffs, but uh, I, don't, I don't think that's quite in line with this kind of build. Uh, 5 of 47. Eng pilot for an extra Octasif. Okay, that, that's not the best, but it could be worse, so we'll put that one in for now. Okay, 37. Reduction in intel and then reduction in engineer. That is a guaranteed slot. Oh, crap. That's a KDF one. And I don't have a Fed one. That's a shame. But I definitely could sell that KDF one. I know those are pretty valuable, so I'll have to look into that. Um, 35. So that's Engineer and Pilot. And I do have three Pilot abilities and three, four Engineer abilities, so that's that'll be good for now. Um, I think if I could swap this 5 of 47 for a 37, that would be huge. So let me save this loadout and let's jump over to the exchange really fast and we can check and see what the prices are. 37 of... Ooh, okay. That is way more expensive than they were even a week ago. Um, there were a couple for like 25 million or something. Um, I knew I wouldn't be able to afford one directly, but this is definitely a little bit out of reach for right now. I wonder how much those 35s are. Yeah, so the 35 is only 25 million. Um, but I already have a 35, so I need something. Oh, right, the severity guy. So tactical, energy weapons. Let's look at blues. Okay, uh, crit severity buff for 12 million. 3% chance for potentially stacking up to 30% crit severity. That's um, that's not bad. That price is pretty reasonable. But I think I, I want that. But at the moment, even though I technically could buy it, I really need to hold on to this EC. I mean, I, I do have lull nuts I could sell from the summer event. So I, I think I will do that for now. Like I was 
12 million. So I can grab Boimler effect later, but for right now, I do have the severity doff, which I'll go ahead and throw on. Okay. So I can always switch back to one of the other ones if I need a more defensive layout. And let's go ahead and re-engineer some weapons, and then I'll run it through a patrol so we can master it. Fire in there, but not too bad. almost forgot one last note uh, I'm running three exploiters and that's kind of my offensive console push on this build um, but I have in the past and you can see by my power bar that I have also used uh, three um, ISO mags the new advanced engineering consoles so a couple of things about that uh, basically when I run the ISO mags uh, you, you can't run them at the same time as exploiters. It's one or the other. So if I replace these three exploiters with isomags that go in engineering slots, I basically would just move these three universal consoles down into the tactical spaces, and then I would put the three isomags up here in engineering. The isomags increase weapon power, right? Um, but weapon power and then category one. So kind of similar to an exploiter, but instead of 8%, crit severity, you're getting, uh, I think it's like 7.3 weapon power. And the nice thing about that is because it's weapon power, it's factored very early in the damage equation. Uh, and it's gonna increase like all of your damage with these weapons. Um, anything that involves weapon power, basically the crits are gonna go a little higher and all that stuff. And uh, there's definitely nothing wrong with that. They're very, very good consoles. But I do wanna mention uh, especially because those are so expensive right now in the context of PvP at least I am finding the exploiters to be either just as good or so similar that uh, you know it's not worth spending potentially uh, like three disruptor isomags is probably like 50 or 60 million a piece so you're looking at 180 million EC or something um, and these fleet consoles you can just go grab you know with a pretty short grind so I'm not really sure it's worth the cost. And uh, another thing to note about the isomags is because they increase weapon power, they're increasing the damage of basically your four forward beams, ignore the Lucari one, uh, and your Omnis. But there are other sources of damage in PvP that would benefit from critical severity, such as your experimental weapon, just as an example. Uh, and your experimental weapon, for example, doesn't benefit from weapon power. So what works best for you probably depends on a couple of different factors and what kind of 
uh, crit you got from other consoles and things. Like right now I have Dominion Defense Screen and Tachyon Net, and the two of those combine for 22.5% crit severity. However, if I had the Lobby console Bioneural Infusion circuits, I would be getting 26% severity from that console alone. So maybe uh, in that situation, it would be better to run Bioneural and instead of the exploiters, run the isomags or, or whatever. So the precise like balance of how you're going to run it, it's going to depend both on the exact arrangement of consoles you have as well as your traits so like crit severity is cat 2 damage applied but when you have a critical hit right so um like i'm running cold hearted on this so i'm not overly saturated on cat 2 so the extra uh once these are upgraded the extra roughly 30 percent crit severity from these three consoles won't be totally wasted however if i didn't have cold hearted and instead i was running say um superior pedal of the metal that's 30 percent bonus damage that saturates my cat too a little bit further and maybe the exploiters aren't as valuable in that case so it's going to depend on a lot of other factors of the build uh what the exact best scenario is uh, but since i have cold hearted and i don't have 180 million ec and probably won't for a very very long time on this character um i'm going to be using the exploiters for uh at least the foreseeable future and I don't anticipate that that's going to really hold me back in any way or anything like that. So, All right, I skipped over the boring part where I just kind of did my endeavors. Um, but those are all complete now. Uh, storming the Spire I'm not going to do uh, because it's awful. But um, just here's the build. But remember, don't forget that at least one of these consoles, I haven't decided which one yet, Probably Dominion Defense Screen, but maybe Tachyon Net Drones. Or maybe even one of the Exploiters, I'm not sure. One of those will re be replaced by the Seneca console uh, as soon as there is a ship sale so that I can get it. And for reference, that is this ship. Um, the console that comes on it is a very, very powerful defensive console that lasts 30 seconds, so it's exceptionally good. Um, so one of those will go there. Uh, and then the other major difference is when the seventh trait sl slot comes, there'll be something else here. And then, of course, one of these three traits here is going to be replaced by Boimler effect. But then at that point, um, this is pretty much the same build that I run uh, over on my main account, uh, my paid account. And, uh, you know, it, it's obviously taken time and effort and grinding, but uh, just kind of shows that it can be done. And especially right now, we live in a time when there aren't really any critical, like, lockbox ships or traits or anything that you really need to do PvP between the, the Hydra and, like, the last event ship. And, uh, I mean, granted, there's, there's definitely, like, traits that you want, obviously, but uh, it's all definitely obtainable. So, um, oh, I also need to grab the... How many Disco Marks do I have? Uh, it's, that's going to be a while. But I eventually need to grab the uh, Warp Core and Shield from Discovery Reputation. Because I would like to have these at some point. But I just don't have the Dilithium to, to do this yet. So, Alright, well that's it. Uh, thanks for watching. If I could get this uh, to move out of the way. There it is. Hydra PvP ship free to play. So, all right. Thanks for watching and see you next time. Bye.